This video is sponsored by Case Filters, Capture with Confidence. Hi everyone, I'm Alistair Ben and you're watching Express Photography. Um, a few days ago, Tom Heaton posted a video on his channel um, where him and I were exploring a section of the west coast of Lewis uh, out in the Outer Hebrides. Um, and I thought what might be really useful is in this video, if I were to show some of the images that I made during that evening, and discuss what it was that attracted me to the scene in the first place, why I chose the settings that I did, why I chose the aspect ratio that I did, and perhaps to discuss kind of the joy that I felt and the satisfaction that I got from going out there and having such a great evening with Tom. So if I jump into my uh, Lightroom catalog here, I think I took 36 photographs in the entire evening and we were out there for about three and a half hours we, we started just after four o'clock and i think we finished off about quarter past seven what you can see on the screen here are full frames from the gfx um, even if i crop in uh, an aspect ratio in the the gfx 100 mark ii it will import it as a full frame in uh, in lightroom here and if i go into the develop module and click the crop tool and go as shot it will show you the crop that I made in camera. Like I said, I made 36 photographs in total. And what we're going to do here is I've just labeled some of them with five stars arrogantly. Um, and there's what? There's five, six, seven, eight photographs here. What I look on in terms of this selection of images is it's kind of an evolution of a, a photo shoot because when we got there um, in the late afternoon, the light was still a little bit harsh, um, but very, very quickly it softened and we got some really quite nice light later on near a sunset. As is normal for me, I'm attracted to anything that I think is cool. <laughs> and it's a nice, simple, uh, expressive photography mantra, which is point your camera at the cool and eliminate everything that's not. And here's the proof of the pudding. Here's my demonstration of, well, this is what I do. And I like to think that I've eliminated most of the uncool from this particular scene. As with any coastal location, there's going to be distractions, there's going to be further far away elements, there's headlands, you know, there's all sorts of different things going on. And what I do like to do, and I think I shot most of these, all but one or two maybe with the 100 to 200 mil uh, GFX lens. Uh, this is certainly uh, the longer focal length. And what attracted me to the scene was this jagged uh, kind of foreground rocks. I really like that kind of jagged foreground rocks. And if we think about the five triggers, which I talk about a lot on the channel here, uh, luminosity, contrast, color, atmosphere, and geometry. The big one here was geometry. I love that kind of geometric jaggedness. Um, and if we think about photographs that we like, we are drawn quite often to jaggy things. The other thing I did like was the way the water was whooshing off uh, the rocks there in the further distance. Uh, there was quite a big swell when we first got there. The waves were maybe coming in. It's like 10 feet high, that type of thing. So they were crashing over this scene and creating quite a lot of energy. And what I wanted to try and do here was to create this very calm, super, super calm foreground to allow the foreground rocks a stage to kind of perform upon, to, to really simplify the, the geometry of that and then still have a long enough shutter speed to get the, the whooshing water flowing down over the top of the rocks there. If I turn the lights off and hit the I key, this is a 1.5 second exposure at f14, ISO 250, and I'm shooting at 105 mil, uh, which is probably about 80 millimeters uh, on a 35 mil camera. So, this is quite a straightforward composition. I, I like the fact that the wave has retained some structure, that it's not total mush. You know, it still feels uh, quite like 1.5 seconds. It didn't move that far. I like the light reflecting off there. There's some good structure. I like the way the water's flowing down over the, the rocks in the background. So there's quite a lot of energy in the top half of the frame. And then the bottom half of the frame we're replacing movement energy with geometric energy, i.e. pointy things. Um, this section right down at the bottom of the frame, 
this is a, a byproduct or a consequence of cropping in camera because if I went back to the crop that I shot in camera, it was a pano through the middle. This bit of the frame was not even in it, so I wasn't aware that there was a something that was kind of half in and half out. And what I did was I moved from the cropped version, the 65 by 24 X pan aspect ratio, I've moved that to 16 by nine to give myself some more space. I think the, the space just, it lent itself to having it. There's a bit of, there is an argument to say we could crop the frame here. Um, and would we lose anything? That's an academic pursuit that we can say for another day. There's no such thing as a perfect crop. You know, we, we can, most compositions, if it's a nice scene with good energy, you're probably going to be able to find four or five different crops in any one scene. So it's not, I don't get too hung up about this is perfect. This is the only way this could ever be done. The second scene is a bit similar. Again, I was drawn to these pointy rocks. Uh, I, I kind of look on these the same way as Alpine mountains. You know, they're big and pointy. Scale gets a little bit ambiguous because they're not much higher than that, probably maybe a couple of feet. Um, again, a longer shutter speed here to create more of an atmospheric scene. Uh, these little little pools of water, I kind of hummed and hard a little bit about cloning them out, um, but in the end decided to leave them just because, uh, well, imperfections, you know, the world's full of them and we are not perfect. So I, I think my buddy Adam Gibbs, um, is one of these people who will leave these things in because he believes that we show an imperfect world. And, and I think that's a really important point. I have been guilty in the past of making images too perfect and making, getting rid of all distractions. And I think that can be a little bit of a minefield as well. You get sucked into making things perfect the whole time. Another 16 by nine aspect ratio. So it fits in with the previous image. Um, and I've left enough shadow detail in this image so that you can see the rocks, but they're not too dominant. Um, the bottom line is this is a scene with quite a simple line. There's a kind of an S curve flows through the frame. And then you have this kind of atmospheric annex <laughs> off to the right hand side here, which I think adds a bit of depth and adds, you know, more atmosphere to this scene. So it's a very simple composition, nothing too complex. I mute the colors. I'm trying not to get them too saturated. Blue is a color that saturates horribly. I see an awful lot of oversaturated blues uh, in images on the internet. And I have made a real point here to kind of just subdue mine to make sure that it's not too dominant. The color of the ocean off the Western Isles is beautiful. There's a kind of teal green to it. And what I wanted to do, do here was suggest that tone without explicitly making it too loud a statement. Now this is a curious one. This, this again is a, an X-Pan crop um, out of uh, a full four by three uh, aspect ratio. And it's a very simple scene. There's nothing terribly complex. I've only got one little area of rocks and it's the motion of the water through the frame and the luminosity and this color again that I think this is where aspect ratio is so important. If this was a four by three, it would be very, very um, challenging. It would just be an awful lot of water and foam and, and luminosity. Whereas this band of color was really the only bit that wasn't white. So I thought it was really important here to just sandwich that between these sort of paler sections on the top. And then we've just got this little bit at the bottom. Now, for some reason, which I cannot explain, it's not actually very sharp. Um, I think what happened was that the tripod may have moved slightly during the exposure um, and it's created a little bit of fuzziness. Now, under normal circumstances, I would reject this image because the, the, the lack of sharpness there I would feel would be a negative, but I'm in a position with my photography now where I'm allowing that abstract to be part of the scene. There's movement, there's flow, there's, there's, there's energy, and I'm prepared to let that slide. It's kind of weird because bits of it look really sharp and bits of it don't. So I'm not quite sure what was going on, but if I hadn't mentioned it, you wouldn't have noticed it. So points for being honest. Huh? Now this 
is actually one of my favorite shots of the entire evening. You can see the light was starting to warm up a little bit. There was reflected light coming away from the horizon. And we were, I mean, both Tom and I were trying to photograph these waves and to try and get some movement. And what was happening was that the swell was actually diminishing the nearer we got to sunset. And I was still kind of fascinated, though, with all the kind of chaotic movement that was going on in the water. So I decided to make a 65 by 24 pano of just this kind of chaotic, yet at the same time somewhat ordered uh, waves and, and reflected light. And I actually really like this shot. Um, it might not be to everyone's cup of tea, but I like it. And that's enough <laughs> to satisfy my personal creative goals, um, is to make images that I like, and I'm gonna share it with you, and some of you will like it and some of you won't. Um, but it does not going to change my opinion of the file. I really like it. There's something about it that really sucks me in. And and I kind of love that, that kind of, it makes me feel very much connected to the experience of being there and watching it all movement. Uh, it, it feels like it's moving in a, in a kind of nice way. Uh, this is very much part of the previous series of Rocks and Water. Uh, we were just starting to pack up to go back down to a little cove that we've been looking at. And I noticed the way that this uh, little island in the background there was kind of nestled in between uh, the, these kind of more uh, deliberate V shapes. In particular, the way the light was um, shining off this surface and the very pronounced jaggedness of the foreground rocks. Super simple image, nothing very complicated. You know, sticking a 10 stop filter on, the shutter speed of this one was uh, 13 seconds. So again, it's a situation where the shutter speed is dictated by the energy of what is moving. If something is moving very, very quickly, then a 13 second exposure is gonna make it feel like foam and atmosphere. If the water's moving very slowly or there's a lot of detritus on the surface, you might get a lot of clutter. It's a case of finding the right shutter speed for the scene to articulate what it is that you want to, to say. You know, do you want it to be super atmospheric or do you want to show more detail and texture? But again, 65 by 24, it kind of elevates the scene. It makes it feel more expansive. I was originally thinking about going with a square, but it just felt like there was too much negative space on top, you know, up here. Uh, so I've decided to just strip this thing down to its bare elements. I'd like to thank Case Filters for their continued support of our work and would recommend anyone looking to upgrade their filter systems to check out the great range of options available. I exclusively use Case Filters because of their exceptional quality and durability. They never let me down. Click on the link in the description below and use the code Alistair for a 5% discount. Now, this is one that uh, I hope Tom mentions in the video, uh, purely because I didn't uh, actually uh, see the video yet that Tom's posting because I'm now in Canada. Uh, so I'm recording this before I leave. But we were walking back uh, over towards another part of the, the coast there and I saw this foreground and I thought, I have to stop and make this photograph. There was just something so incongruous about this scar. Uh, it's where the surface rocks have been uh, shorn away by something, um, leaving this really rich red colored rock. And I spent quite a bit of time here, well, not quite a bit of time, some time with a wide angle lens right on top of this thing, focus stacking, exposure blending. Uh, the foreground is a short exposure. The background is a two minute exposure. Uh, to get the movement in the cloud. This area of white cloud here was a really, really powerful trigger. Uh, it, it, was, it was so dominant because it was static and full of detail. And I didn't want this area at the back of the frame to detract from the foreground. So I did spend quite a bit of time just creating this composition, simple square. As soon as you stick something in the middle of a square, it's gonna feel like it belongs in the middle of the square. Uh, very, very simple, nothing too complicated. I've left it quite dark because these rocks were black um, and I just want the orange to stand out. One of my favorite shots from the evening. I, I, I really quite enjoyed this one. Um, I was very taken with this foreground. Um, I liked this kind of jagged angular rock that was taking up the, the bottom left-hand side of the frame here. And this is quite an unconventional composition, I suppose, because we've filled the left-hand side of the frame with something 
almost like a barrier, almost like an obstacle to the water. I like the way the water kind of streaks into the bottom right hand side of the frame and it feels like it wants to lead you into the frame. I nearly said leading lines. Um, and obviously the light was starting to warm up and, you know, we ended up in a far more uh, evening kind of situation where the, where the light was really starting to improve. 4x5 vertical, um, I feel that that allows the thing to have a kind of classic feel, sits in the frame pretty well. It's a really just a straight uh, bottom left to top right diagonal. It's kind of classic uh, com composition 101, uh, quite straightforward. This one here was, uh, again, <laughs> when you get to a beautiful landscape where you've got layers and you've got depth and you've got sort of uh, transitions through a frame and the light starts kicking off, honestly, I think it's kind of hard to fail, but it's easy to fail. Uh, I, I think we shouldn't, but we do. And I think the reason we fail or the reason that we come away with images that we're not happy with is we get sucked into conventions. We get sucked into finding a foreground. We get sucked into conventional aspect ratios of three to two or four by five. And um, you'll see over the next series of images, I've got quite a few different compositions of this scene. This is probably my favorite. I really love this X-Pan uh, panoramic format as my buddy uh, Adam Gibbs does as well. Uh, you become a bit of a junkie uh, to the X-Pan ratio when you can shoot it in camera. Um, and I just love this. I mean, okay, the light is right on the edge of the frame there. Would it be better if it was in here? Well, it would be different, but better is is not the, the language that I think is of great value in this. Yes, it's out there on the edge of the frame, but I don't feel drawn to it necessarily. Um, I've left enough detail in these rocks so that we can see the detail, but it's, it's quite a dark, low-key image, so it's quite moody. So by the time the sun was near the horizon, it was actually stuck behind some cloud, and it, then it just started to come out at the bottom of that cloud. And because it was so low in the horizon and so late in the evening, it was never going to give us enough illumination to kind of light up the whole coast. But what we did get was some really nice light just reflecting off some of these surfaces of the rocks in the water here. Um, this is another 4x5, quite a long exposure. I will just... It's a 25 second exposure. And really the purpose of that is to just try and reduce texture. Um, water kind of slops around rocks when they're offshore like this. Um, and this big streak here would get quite messy with a shorter exposure. I kind of felt the 25 seconds was enough to create that kind of quite ethereal atmosphere. This image is all about this light on the rocks there and obviously how it mirrors to the light on the sky there. We're not showing where the sun is, which is just off to the left hand side of the frame. Um, quite a simple composition. Again, I think I shot this as an X-Pan in camera and then decided to open it up uh, in the final processed version. And this is the final image, which is just a zoomed in version of the previous one, just to highlight even more the, the detail on the rocks there. Now I've desaturated the blues in this image hugely to take away an awful lot of blue color from the surf. Now they still look kind of blue, um, but it's a lot less than the camera wanted to show me. So desaturating blues to the point where you can still feel that it's cool, but without making it too blue is a really, really good way to go. Now, when I started this video, I said there was eight images. There are in fact 10. Uh, there was a couple I hadn't imported into this folder yet. So that has been rectified. So uh, anyone who wants to point that out, I know. Um, so I was actually, when Tom asked me at the end of, of the recording uh, how I'd spent the evening or how I felt the evening had gone, I basically said it had a whale of a time. Um, this is five minutes from the house that Anne Christine and I have rented in the north of Lewis um, and having this on your doorstep and being able to drive home and see my wife and crack open a beer uh, a couple of minutes after leaving the coast just felt like <laughs> like I'd gone to heaven um, and it really whet my appetite for moving out to the island. Um, 
In next week's video, I'm actually going to be sharing with you the last photo shoot that I've done in the area that we live in just now, the, the wet Atlantic rainforests on the west of Scotland, uh, on the mainland, not on the islands. So we are going to see quite a shift in content from us here at Express Photography, moving out to the islands, going to be surrounded by ocean. There's going to be a lot of seascapes, of course, but we also have some nice mountain scenes there too. If you would like to join me on a workshop, perhaps in the Outer Hebrides, then there are some spaces opening up for the spring of 2025. Click on the link below uh, to go to the Expressive Photography website to check out what we have available. There are also a few bits and bobs in Spain and perhaps even Morocco still available as well. Uh, but yeah, Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed my analysis of these photographs. Are they the best photographs ever taken? Nope, they're not, but they were really satisfying for me to make. And I really believe that when I was out there, I didn't allow the photography to get in the way of the, of the experience. I, I felt like I was really present. I felt I was really uh, enjoying being there. And the advantage with some of those longer exposures was I was able to just sit back and listen to the waves and watch the birds and watch the sunset. So again, the expressive photography way is to make sure that we don't allow our photography to get in the way of having a nice time. And we don't have so much ownership on these images that if they don't turn out as good as we would like, that it doesn't ruin our memory of that experience as well. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already done so, please click on Tom's video to check out the whole vlog that he made and some of the things that him and I were talking about on the evening. And don't forget to click and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up and jump into the comments. What do you think of the images? Do you like them? Uh, what could I have done better, if anything, or everything? Thank you for watching. I'm Alistair Ben, Expressive Photography. Bye for now.